Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Combat Mission Shock Force 2, uh, the newest of the Combat Mission games, the real-time uh, tactical uh, military simulations of the Combat Mission series. Combat Mission Shock Force 2 looks at a hypothetical NATO invasion of Syria that is taking place in the year 2008. This game was originally created, the concept for this game was created well before the Syrian Civil War started, so it really has nothing to do with that. It's just based around some sort of premise, and I'm not sure what exactly Syria did, but there's somehow Syria sort of convinced the United States, and all of NATO as well, to invade Syria in 2008. Um, we are playing the NATO DLC pack, which opens up a variety of NATO countries, uh, including Germany, and we're playing the German campaign, which is an interesting one. It's a medium-sized campaign, and I believe you follow like two battalions of German troops that make that are part of uh, the 10th, I believe it was, German, German Panzer Division. Um, and so you have a limited number of units that you draw from in these battles that you play through in these different scenarios. Some of the American campaigns, some of the bigger campaigns, you might fight with one battalion and then you might not see that specific battalion again for three or four battles. In this one, you really kind of are fighting with the same forces over and over again. And what that does is that really stresses your ability to be efficient and effective in the campaign. Because when you lose casualties in one battle, you don't get replacements before the next battle. You know, in, in, a, in this hypothetical invasion that's taking place over several days, there's not going to be time for German, Germany to fly in raw recruits to provide replacements. This is a, a Blitzkrieg style, you know, a Desert Storm style invasion. So when you lose casualties, you lose them for good. The exception is sometimes when a vehicle is knocked out, you might be able to repair it between battles, but the, the men that are lost are lost for the most part. There's, I think, you know, there's sometimes there's elements like the recon elements might not fight in every battle, but, but, but what have you. Anyway, this is the third battle in the campaign. We did fight the second battle of the campaign previously, and it didn't go very well. I think I lost like 34 casualties, four vehicles, and one tank. I refought it sort of offline, um, and I did much better. Uh, I, I, I sort of took a, a northern route to the objective uh, and then swung in on the main city from the east. So I swung west and north, and then I swung east into the city and I only ended up losing like seven casualties so that's the save we're resuming here um, this is the Battle of Al Bab or I guess we're in the northwest suburbs of Al Bab it's June 17th 2008 1745 hours the town of Al Bab is an administrative town in the district of Aleppo located atop a large hill to the southeast of the town is a minor military installation which dominates the highways we've chosen to be our supply route uh, this is your objective so you can see we're striking here at Alt Bob. The German Panzer Division's overall objective is the city of Aleppo. The first battle was fought as we sort of broke across the border into Syria. The second battle was fought sort of as we were clearing some roadways and some towns that were along the highway that could have interdicted our supply routes. And the third battle is us driving east to Al Bab. I believe the overall objective is to flank Aleppo and surround it before we reduce it. Uh, and so now we're moving on Al Bab. Um, you can see here the, the minor military installation which dominates the highway is our objective. Uh, we want to secure the road by occupying key positions along the length of the highway, depriving the enemy of objectives Zurich, Bern, Basel, and Geneva. Uh, you can obviously see these, these names are named after, uh, what, Swiss, uh, Swiss towns or cities. Uh, it's not obviously the actual Syrian names for these locations. Uh, it's not necessary for you to force either to, force either to enter or wait. It's not necessary for your force either to enter or occupy the buildings of Al-Bab itself to secure a victory. Therefore, it would be unwise to expose your forces to mount operations at this stage of the campaign. Our forces that we're starting the battle with. Uh, we have one company of Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, we have one Zug, or Panzer, unit, so probably four uh, Leopard tanks. Our fire support consists of one Zug PZ-2000s. I think those are 155mm artillery batteries. Uh, and then one Zug Mortar Battalion, or battery. We'll get one reinforcement of a Panzer Pioneer unit in about 35 minutes. Air support is limited to interdicting enemy movement in the town during the hours of daylight. You'll not be able to call on our support throughout the mission. Okay. 
Um, Al Bab is known to be defended by the Second Infantry Brigade, backed up by some poor quality reserve tanks. This fighting strength has been dispersed across a wide front, so you can expect to engage the enemy in roughly equal numbers. Due to the exposed position and obvious function, it is unlikely that the installation itself will be strongly defended. The defenders will more likely be encountered hiding amidst the civilian buildings to the south and throughout the numerous small farm buildings scattered throughout the orchards. Uh, the plan, it's not necessary for your forces to either either to enter or occupy the buildings of Al-Bab to secure victory. Therefore, it would be unwise to expose your forces to mount operations at this stage of the campaign. Note, rules of engagement. Strict. Al-Bab is teeming with refugees who have fled from the border towns and villages. Uh, due, to our, due to our large numbers uh, of civilian cr civilians crowded into Al-Bab, it is essential that you preserve the civilian buildings such as there are. Even if your forces do come under fire from them, the farm buildings and the objective buildings are all viable targets and can be fired on. Okay, so don't bomb El Bob, basically, but you can take out the farm buildings and the objective buildings on the outskirts of town. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So you can see here we have two hours to achieve our objective. As we kind of look here, you can see these are some of our uh, martyr uh, our AFVs uh, that are sort of uh, kind of like the German version of the Bradley. It's got a nice, uh, you know, what is it, a 30 millimeter cannon or 20 millimeter cannon on top. Uh, and then it's got some heat rounds, uh, it's a, or sorry, anti-tank guided missiles. You can see we've got some Leopard 2A6 tanks. We've got four of them to be specific. Uh, if we zoom out here, we can see uh, we've got four martyrs here in the north, uh, as well as a scouting unit, uh, or sorry, a, uh, a artillery section. So we've got three uh, sections of infantry. Uh, with a platoon uh, leader for the Panzer Grenadier HQ. We've got one observer section that's uh, up here in the north. If we take a look, swing around here on the other end, we've got another four martyrs with three more infantry sections and a platoon HQ. And then sort of in the front, looks like we've got uh, what I imagine is our company headquarters unit, uh, and then a couple of sections of Panzer Grenadiers as well. So it looks like we actually have three platoons of infantry here, uh, These, th each one with three sections of infantry and a platoon headquarters. And then we've got uh, a company headquarter. I guess it's technically 2nd 112, so is that a battalion? Uh, and then uh, a 2IC team. I don't know what a 2IC team is. Um, you can see we have multiple objectives we have to take. So here is the first objective is Bern over here. Basel's a little bit further north, then Geneva, and then Zurich. We probably want to stay off the main highways. I would imagine those are going to be uh, sort of teeming with IEDs. Um, so the first objective is on the left here is Bern, then Basel to the right, then Geneva, then Zurich. Uh, Al Bob, I would imagine, as these buildings over here that are not part of any of the objectives. So this is where the civilians are located. This must be the outskirts of Elbab. Elbab probably extends further to the left off the map. But these buildings here presumably will have enemy troops in them that are going to kind of snipe at us. But we don't want to destroy those buildings. So we really want to focus on the buildings of Bern, Basel, Geneva, and Zurich. Um, you know, the question is how best to approach these places. I would imagine our martyrs might make sense to sort of swing up here real quick into this wood line, secure this building on the left flank, use the wood line as cover, then advance sort of through this, uh, through into these into these buildings here on the outskirts of Bern, sweeping east across Bern. Meanwhile, while we do that, we can sort of keep our other armored units out here to the south and east of Bern to provide covering fire and suppression fire of any units here in the eastern portion of the of the the objective, and then swing north uh, on Basel and Geneva. There's not a ton of room to maneuver here. I would guess we want to stay away from the left side of the map as that'll be more exposed to Al Bab itself, and there's some multi-story buildings out here in Al Bab that uh, that would probably provide some pretty good visualization for the enemy so that they can kind of snipe at us so what we probably want to do is once we take burn we probably want to swing our troops east and flank Basel from the east uh, so sort of isolating and maybe taking out these buildings here these farm buildings here which I believe the game said we can destroy and then using this small shrubbery if you will or these these small orchards, if you will, as cover as we swing in on Basel from the east. And then likewise, sort of hopping east and then coming in on Geneva from the flank. So I think that's what I'm going to kind of do, almost like a leapfrogging campaign in the Pacific. We'll, we'll take Burn more head on and then we'll just swing right to left, right to left. Uh, and then maybe, uh, again, way right and then left into Zurich. Um, I'm not sure. That'll put the enemy in El Bob in our flank and our rear. 
So Zurich may be something we have to figure out what we do once we actually get there. You think it's a counter-terror unit, Ramgar? I'm not sure. All right, so with that being said, let's zoom down here. All right, I'm going to adjust the placement of some of these units. Whoops. I don't want to do that. All right. I forgot what the buttons are, what the hotkeys are for some of the movement orders here. All right. So move these guys over here. All right. So we'll move these guys here. Meanwhile, I'm going to have one of our spotters just instantly go atop this building. So it's a three-story building, so I'm assuming they've got they've got line of sight here. Is there an option here to see line of sight? Is it you? No. What's the button for line of sight? I don't even remember. Hmm. I don't see it. Yeah, not sure. In any event, I'm imagining we'll have, have decent line of sight on burn itself from atop this building. So we'll leave these guys kind of back here atop that building. Um, first things first, we're going to go ahead and we are going to order a fast movement here uh, by these units um, right up to this wood line. I'm presuming it's undercover. And then we're going to advance these troops through the through this forest on a burn. Meanwhile, our tanks here. Move these guys over here so they've got good line of sight on the town itself. I'm a little bit worried if there's any anti-tank guided missile units in the town. Is there any cover here? This is all just flat. Burn is elevated somewhat, so I guess to the left there's a little bit of elevation on this building. The rest of the guys, we might actually be shielded from from visibility. So we may not be able to, to cover them all that effectively from that location. If I move them over this way, we might be able to. Hopefully there's no anti-tank guided missiles that are going to knock my tanks out there. Now, again, these troops could immediately go for Basil. Uh, and then uh, and then flank burn all together. That might actually be be a sound strategy for at least one of these platoons of infantry, is to kind of swing out uh, wide and after Basil. Just in the interest of time, if we can take Basil and burn sort of simultaneously, that might actually be an efficient use of our time. I'm not sure how many enemy troops are located in burn itself. Uh, there's a rotate option here, right? Or face. Here. All right. So we'll have, let's see, these guys are third section, fourth, second, what, first, I imagine? So let's do this. Let's put our, our other units over here. This way we can advance on the town directly if necessary. Put the headquarters unit just slightly in the rear. Okay. I'm a little uneasy with all these, these troops in, in these, you know, what feels like a little bit of a sitting duck situation. You know, what we could do is actually let's put these guys on the far right. And we'll advance across across this terrain here. I'm not sure if this is terrain that they'll get stuck in. Like, is this mud they're going to get stuck in? That might be a problem, actually. Some of these darker sort of sand uh, textures could actually be uh, difficult terrain to move through. So we'll see, I guess. But if this is this is, might be mud that we can't just move through, we might have to stick to the roads. I'm not sure. 
I guess we'll find out. All right, we'll set up the headquarters here. Unit. We'll just kind of stick these, keep these guys where they're at for now. I don't really want to advance up this main road, though. I feel like that that's if I can flank it further to the east, that would be preferable, taking you know these individual town these buildings and then move along this main road west into Basel from the flank. But we'll find out here. Meanwhile, I think we will actually unmount uh, unmount these troops. So we'll move these troops directly into the into the buildings here from the flank. We actually don't need to waste time for them to dismount. Oh, they're going to dismount automatically. Okay, good. Uh, okay. All right, so this section here is going to move. Move here. All right, so we'll take these three buildings on the east of Baron while these troops move up north through the woods, and then they're going to move from the woods into these buildings on the west of Baron, and hopefully we can take it relatively quickly. Now, this is real. This is going to be done in real time, so I think we'll also set our headquarters here. So we'll go ahead and uh, unpause, and we'll see you know what happens. I'm not moving the troops on the right yet. So you can see our vehicles are instantly moving forward. No sign of enemy troops yet. Let's go ahead and pause this thing. I think I can still issue orders while paused, right? I can. So these troops are going to dismount and move through these woods. We'll set up the platoon HQ there. I don't know if they're going to get stuck in this wood line or not. I guess we'll see. Looks like they can move through this terrain okay. Meanwhile, you can see our, uh, our half-tracks are... Or not half tracks, but our AFV is opening up. Troops coming out of them, deploying, moving it through the the forest here, in good order. First time on a mission in Iraq, you had to turn around on what looked like dry ground, and it was mud, and you got stuck. Yeah, that definitely happened. I mean, obviously that was you in real life, but this is you know it feels like that that stuff happens here in, in game. I definitely had that issue on the last map. All right, so these guys are moving. Hey, Baldwin. Good to see you there with the scotch emojis. Move our tanks for just a hair. You can see our infantry is advancing across the open ground. Burn each one of these first three objectives is worth 50 each, I believe. I think Zurich is worth 250. So we definitely want to get to Zurich. I just, I mean, burn might be largely unoccupied, too. Especially given how close it is to the edge of the map. I might be taking this overly, you know, overly cautious approach. Alright, so our guys seem to be moving across that terrain relatively easily. So far, no indication of enemy troops. You can't burn Ben. Burn, burn. All right, so we're going to move these guys over here this way on the right flank of the map. See if we can cover anything as we advance. So far, no indication of enemy troops anywhere. As you see, our troops on the left are advancing and our troops on the right are advancing. No fire anywhere. I imagine an ambush is coming at some point. But maybe not quite yet. Trying to be a little bit more aggressive than in my last game where I really got myself into, into trouble time-wise by being overly cautious. These guys seem to be moving okay. Those might be ditches. Oh, those are ditches. Don't get stuck. 
across those di Oh. Uh-oh. You bogged? He's bogged. We may have spotted an enemy vehicle. Enemy tanks. Tanks. Oh, boy. Oh, no! We just got hit. Get out of here, boys. Whoever's still alive in this thing. Oh, that's dumb. Maybe, maybe duck behind... Duck behind this building. We got hit by an anti-tank guided missile. Lost one of our martyrs. That was from a cross map. Fuck. Well, this flanking maneuver didn't go go all that well. That was from across the fucking map. No enemy troops in burn itself by the looks of it. Um, we might have taken an enemy vehicle out over here though. I'm not sure with what. I don't know if we fired off one of our Milan anti-tank guided missiles. I didn't I didn't see that we did. Oh, we did actually. Both of these guys fired one ATGM. I don't think my tanks can spot anything from that angle over there. So the crew from this martyr, one of the guys made it out. The rest of the squad was destroyed in it. Meanwhile, we've got smoke that's been laid here for our infantry as they advance upon this building. Our other uh, martyr up here is sort of hiding behind this building, getting troops into this building. Our entire flank maneuver from moving from the east kind of fell apart here. Move these troops in here. So we still have two sections of infantry and three good martyrs here at the moment. I think they're safe where they're at. Oh, shit. Are we getting hit by enemy mortar fire? Why don't you duck back behind this building? Oh, I meant for your, your vehicle to do it. All right. So how are our troops doing over here? It looks like we've made it into burn itself. No indication of enemy troops. I guess we'll just try and clear these buildings. There are some troops on the edge of burn. Alright, so some pot shots being taken at some enemy troops. I might be off on the edge here. We are claiming there might be an enemy armored vehicle out this way as well. Move our tanks up this way. Two of our tanks are going to move north of the objective. One is going to move into burn. Two are going to move into burn itself. Just to provide crossfire because if they've got tanks on this... Oh, shit. Is that artillery coming down on us? Oh, my God. We just... This entire squad was just wiped out. What are they getting hit by? Oh, God. More casualties. Oh, those aren't tanks that I ordered it for. Those are martyrs. Shit. Hey, armor. Get in the fucking game. Uh, P. Warner, the, the engine of this game, the 3D engine anyway, the first version of it came out in 2006. It's been sort of constantly updated since, but that's, that's the core. And that section is 50% casualties. These guys are 90% casualties. The squads in the east made it in okay. Barbarossa to Berlin is, is 99, but that's not 3D, that's not real-time. Well, I mean, it's turn-based real-time. Which might sound weird if you've never played it, but that does make some sense. All right. Where is our armor over here? Move our leopards. Something's smoking over there. Uh, actually, don't go that way. These damn ditches. I don't know if these are irrigation ditches or what, what they are. All right, front hit. What is this? An enemy... Is it a T-55, I would guess? Reactive armor, huh? 
So you can see we hit something over this way. Ah, I can't. They just shot at the tank that's already burning. What is this? Is that a, that might be a T-72. I don't think that's a T-55. I think that's a T-72. If it's a... Yeah, I think that's a T-72. Oh, there's an ATGM. We can see it in flight. Ooh. Landed well short. Hit reactive armor over here. That was a Milan anti-tank guided missile. Just knocked out that enemy tank. All right, with our with our armored support, I think we'll advance here. I mean, I already lost half my infantry. That's that's part of the problem. Oh boy, don't you roads are a bad idea, sir. All right, so I think we basically took the first objective. It was not cheaply done. You can see enemy heavy machine guns are are hitting our our leopard here. Those might even be like tacticals that are firing at it. My infantry on the left flank has largely been wiped. G General, I have no platoon. Yeah, you're right, you don't. I think we get some reinforcements 35 minutes in. Where is this guy going? You're showing your ass to the enemy. That's smart. All right. So Basil had at least one enemy armor unit. You can see three enemy tanks appear to be burning. We've got our martyrs sort of up providing support. I think the infantry's largely flushed this first objective. Call artillery support down. We've got another enemy tank out this way. I don't know if we're engaging that. I don't know what can see that. So flanking out to the east may not be a wise idea. Advancing up through this orchard is probably the most realistic strategy here. So I'm going to move this infantry here toward the lower level of this building. Actually, I think there's an assault option, isn't there? Yeah, let's do that. So let's, let's assault this building as our uh, armor fires at it point blank. I should just have my chain gun on this, uh, or not, this 20 millimeter cannon here. 20 millimeter cannons really rip these sort of houses apart in this game. Much more effective, it seems to me, in knocking out enemy buildings than uh, 120 millimeter cannons. More explosions out this way. All right, area targets with martyrs are seem to be a very good, very good strategy here. Let's move these boys forward. We'll probably just level the buildings in Basel. It did say the objective buildings are, are fair game. Mimlens, thank you very much for the uh, for the sub and the gift uh, of the sub to Hoff F13B. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, dude. All right, so let's just destroy this building here. I think we're allowed to do that. All right. Okay, so we've secured the first objective, I believe, in burn. I'm just going to flatten this building here. I've experimented with this in other battles, and you can definitely just, like, lay waste to entire building complexes. That's a thing. 
You can see these buildings are sort of collapsing, if you will. Meanwhile, our infantry has made it into this two-story building in the center. Not sure if there's enemy troops still inside or not. Looks like they've surrendered. So we captured, wow, what, six enemy prisoners? So we took that central building. You can see the left wing of it's a little bit damaged. Meanwhile, I'm just busy flattening this this next building here with uh, 20 millimeter. I don't know if they're machine guns or chain guns or, or whatever they are. It's behind a reverse slope, you say? All right. Area target the shit out of that. If they can see you, if you can see the building, you should flatten it, is sort of my overriding principle at the moment. Let's move some of our infantry up here in the center. Move my armor up as well. You can see a Milan missile there. Not very accurate with those boys. All right, go into this rubble. Manually just destroy every building here is kind of what I'm trying to do. Also, we have a lot of 20 millimeter uh, rounds, so that's easy-ish to, uh, to try and do. All right, so what are we going to do now? Um, you know, honestly, I'd rather get this infantry back in these vehicles. And then we're going to pull these vehicles back, and we're going to swing back around to the center. I need more men for assaulting the center. This is not DOS, P. Warner. All right, so let's destroy these buildings. I don't understand why I can't see them. Like, just destroy the damn wall. You have an aim point. You can... Yes, I'm expending a lot of ammo, by the way. I'm okay with that. All right, these infantry just took a casualty here advancing across this way. I'm not sure what from. We're getting shot at. God damn it. Where's that fire coming from? I would think anybody in these buildings is, is damn good and suppressed. Ah! All right, move our armor up here. Let's pause. All right. Let's take stock of the situation here. So we're tw we're 15 minutes into the fight, and we're already pretty shot up. We've got the bulk of our infantry and units here still sort of stacked up on the left, but we've lost quite a few casualties here. Um, I've put, I think, too much weight for my advance on the left. I'm going to try and advance a couple of these units that are pretty shot up into these buildings here along the left, and then we're going to try and swing the rest over here to directly to Basel through this corridor. I'm trying to clear the left flank of that advance by knocking out these buildings. We'll still take fire from, from uh, Al Bob from further back out here, but it's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit further out, so I'm hoping we're, we're somewhat safe. I'm going to move this infantry forward here, so we're going to have two sections at least uh, in this sort of staging area for the drive on Basel. 
we'll, uh, we'll bring some of these martyrs back as well. See if we can't uh, if we can't get a little bit more of support sort of for our drive across the center. We are working on getting these infantry on the right flank back into their vehicles, and then we're going to advance uh, them up the center toward Basel. I do have these spotters. I think we've got 155 millimeter cannons here that we could drop on the enemy. Um, this building complex looks like it's going to be a problem, so I'm actually going to go ahead and call an artillery strike in with some PZ. 2000s here. We're going to do a linear target. We're going to start... Well, you've got no line of sight. Aren't you on the roof, dude? You are. You're telling me you, you've got no line of sight back over this way from a third story or from the roof. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this first part of our look at the third battle in the German campaign of uh, combat mission shock force 2 the game is out of on steam it is published uh, by matrix and slytherin games it is developed by battlefront uh, and it looks at a hypothetical german or i guess the, the the dlc we're playing with is the nato dlc but the game looks at a hypothetical nato invasion of syria in the mid uh 2000 first decade of the 2000s anyway guys this was taken from a live stream from my twitch channel links in the description if you're interested but i'm gonna go ahead and sign off here hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts below and we'll pick this up next time